And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. What time is it? It's time for Act 3, bitches! <laughs> yes, Bunny, we're here. After what seemed like three and a half hours spent talking about Supernatural, now we finally get to the main course of the show. Now, I wasn't sure how to start this part of the show, how to do the intro for this week's film, what should I say, what should I talk about, what should its theme be, yes, Maxwell? I know uh, the intro song, I know what, I have, I've been waiting to share this idea with, uh, with Bunny. Um, oh, okay, so what's the idea? Bunny. Uh, all these days I had an uh, uh, intro to the Pope on film. You've come up with an introduction to the Pope on yes, film. Okay, yes. uh, go for it. Okay, well... Come here, come here. You keep walking farther away. Come here. Okay, okay. What, how does the introduction go? Okay. How the intro starts. Yes. This. This is the Pope on film. Starting Mr. Steve and his host, Max. Oh, so now you're the host of the show. You're 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 giving yourself I mean, promotions. I mean, I mean Has there been Russian interference with this podcast? Possibly. Hmm. Come here, come closer, come closer. Okay, continue. No. Now, the actual intro. Okay, okay, tell the intro. Get your hand off of your face and, and talk over here. Okay. Okay. Okay, do the intro. You say you have an intro. Do the intro. Do the intro. No pressure. Uh Okay, you say you have an intro for the podcast. How does it go, Maxwell? Okay, it goes. Okay, you keep walking farther oh, away. Awesome. Yeah. You need. Hey, if you, do, if you like the whole podcast. Oh, you should, if you have, if you, if you have watched the Pope on film, you should give it a like, subscribe, pick, do the bell thing. But if you haven't saw the Pope on film, you should check it out with a bunch of, with a bunch of Pope on film. So, if you have it, you need to, you need to, because, because it's so good. Th that was Back a, to you, Dad. Thank you, Maxwell. That was a great song for the Pope on film. Thank you so much. Yay. 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 Okay. Gotcha. Thank you, Maxwell. So, um... This might blow your mind, but that was actually unscripted. Eleanor, stop throwing peanuts! No! Can you take those peanuts away from her, Bella? She's throwing peanuts. She, she just has peanuts, and she's just throwing them. Oh, now she's pretending to eat them because I called her out. Um, so I wasn't sure how to start this episode of the podcast, so I asked two people to help me with the introduction. The first person I went to was Eleanor. Uh-huh. And I said, Eleanor, how should I start... The Pope on film. And this is what she had to say. Fwesh. Mummy. Mesh. Ooh. Uh. Mesh. Moon men. Uh. Moon men. Peesh. Bunny. Bunny. Peesh. Uh. Mine. Bap. 
So I hope that that moved you, loyal listeners. Well, it reminds me of something that Nietzsche said. That when looking in the yeah. abyss, the abyss looks back at you. Yes, very deep. Very, very deep. When, when did Eleanor what? start reading Nietzsche? A good question. A, yeah. Who knows? She's she's a mystery. But I still felt that that wasn't enough, uh, enough for an opening. So I went to one of my other children. Uh, and so I went to Amber. Uh-huh. And I asked her what, she, what I should talk about. And she said... Well, if I had a podcast, my podcast would be about funny high school drama. So, Bunny, let's talk we, about... We, we can always put in a third break. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about funny high school drama. Uh, so, when I went into high school, I was I went into Deer Valley High School in Glendale, Arizona. I was a Deer Valley Skyhawk. Our our mascot was the Skyhawk, which is weird because there's already a mascot in the name. It's a deer. Uh huh. But whatever, we were the Skyhawks, which is weird. Are there Groundhawks? But whatever. Groundhawks Day. It's confusing. So we were the Deer Valley Skyhawks, yeah. and. You had to do one year of PE, but you got the choice to do it whenever you wanted. And most people waited until like the last second. So you saw a lot of uh, juniors and seniors taking PE. But I said, no, I'm going to get this crap over and done with. So my freshman year, I signed up for PE. And there was another guy who signed up for PE his freshman year. And his name was Ricky. And uh, Ricky had Ricky, not Richie, uh, but I really like that reference, Maxwell. Good, good job. Say it again. Ricky. Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> so, so well remembered, Maxwell. Yes. For someone your age, that's impressive. So, so Ricky had gone to elementary school with all these kids in grade school to all these kids. That's so by the right. time he showed up in high school, he was super popular and everybody Loved him and everybody knew him and he was the best. And the sun shone out of his ass, this fucking white boy. And so every day during Eleanor's coming in hot, yelling something. She, yeah, it's like she's running around the house telling people that the British are coming, I think. She literally sounds like she's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Yeah, one if by land, two if by sea, three if by Eleanor. Yeah. So she's just on the midnight ride of Eleanor warning people. So so every day we had P.E. Mm-hmm. And every day Ricky would sneak up behind me in the locker and smash my head into the locker door. Okay. Yeah. And then he would laugh and then everybody would laugh with him and I was the 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 joke I was made fun of. I eventually went to Eleanor. Go tell Bella that. Oh my god, that worked. Okay. <laughs> no. Stop it, Maxwell. You don't do it too, okay? Okay, now Maxwell's doing it too. So Eventually, I went to the PE teacher, the PE coach. Every PE coach just constantly lives in a pair of sunglasses. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure why. I'm assuming it's because uh, they're all sort of alcoholics and they're hiding their shame. Yeah. They're all just sort of angry divorced dads. So I went to the PE teacher and told the PE teacher that I was being bullied, and that Ricky kept beating me up. And the PE teacher said, well, be a man and fight him. That was my teacher's wise words of wisdom for me to just, oh, someone's beating you up? Beat him up back. This is the (laughs) mid-90s. Eventually, I had enough of it, and one day, I just said, if Ricky does this to me again, if Ricky gets my 
head and slams it into the locker door one more time. I'm going to go nuts, and I'm just going to start throwing punches. Okay. So a- as it turns out, he he grabbed my head and tried to pull me in the locker, but I, I just snapped, and I, I hit his hand away from me, and I started yelling and throwing wild punches. And um, interesting fact about me, uh, I punch like a four-year-old. <laughs> okay. So I just started doing this really sad, pathetic, limp-wristed hits on his shoulder. Okay, and, please, and, and, please don't tell me you were pinwheeling. It, no, but but they were really sad. I was just eh, 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 and, and, and hitting him and, and getting pissed off and, and crying. And I remember Ricky's face staring at me because it was a look of sadness and pity. Like, oh, this is this is this is going bad for you. And I think he 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 felt such pity on me that he never bothered me again because he never did it again. But for whatever reason, the next day when I went to school, everybody was everybody was talking about me and I was the coolest kid in school. Everybody knew my name, and they're, oh, there's Steve. Hey, Steve. What's, what's, hey, Steve, what's going on? And, 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 and as it turns out, for whatever reason, a rumor spread that I kicked Ricky's ass in PE class. Cool. Okay. That's. And, and and I wasn't sure, like, oh, hey, there's Steve. Hey, I heard you kicked Ricky's ass in PE class. Yeah, you laid him out, and he was on the floor bleeding. Man, you're a badass. And I'm like, how in the world did this happen? And that's when it hit me. Oh, my God, high school is exactly what TV and movies taught me it was. These rumors just pop up and happen in this weird environment. That's what TV taught me would happen, and I didn't believe it, but holy shit, it's true. (laughs) Suddenly, I was the coolest guy in class. Awesome. And and it happened again at the end of of my freshman year. I I was uh, one of those rarities. I was a freshman who got a major part in the school musical, and I was in... the play Grease, and I did a really good radio announcer voice, and and also we were just we were doing the play Grease, and that is popular anywhere you do it, and so people heard about my amazing voice, and so I was hired uh forty bucks and a concert T-shirt. I was hired to open for a band that was playing a big concert at a local. A uh, big, massive mega church nearby. Okay, cool. This church contacted me through the school and asked me if I wanted to open, and I, and I got paid a small amount, and I, I, I got paid a concert shirt. They threw in a one their the band's cassette, their album. Yeah, and and after I did that for the band. The next day, everybody was talking about me again. Oh, there's Steve. There he is. There he is. Oh, hey, Steve. And I didn't understand why. And I'm like, fuck, what happened now? You know? But as it turns out, the next day, the rumor was I was doing voiceover work for a Trojan condom commercial. (laughs) Okay. And everyone thought that 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 oh Steve that Steve he's so cool yeah he's doing a condom commercial on the radio hey Steve hey what's going on remember me when you're famous ha 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 just kidding no I'm not and it's like <laughs> holy shit it, it, high school is exactly what they all taught me it was this is amazing I am <laughs> blown away by this this literally is what high school is like you know. blown away so those are my high school drama stories now comes the hard part how do i now segue from that 
to this week's movie. Well, just sit back and listen to the Segway Master. All right. <clears throat> so that was Amber's suggestion, funny high school drama. Ah, high school. A time early in your life when you're awkward and unsure, and you make mistakes and you hopefully learn from them. And speaking of mistakes, that brings us to this week's movie. <laughs> because this week we will be discussing an early, awkward, unsure mistake in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Marvel's only mistake. This week we will be discussing the 2008 red-headed stepchild of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, The Incredible Hulk! Yes. Yes, The Incredible Hulk, the lowest grossing film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Currently a 67% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is okay, but not for a Marvel movie. Black Panther is at a 97%. (laughs) For Christ's sake. And also, I want to be clear, because I mentioned to a lot of people that we were doing The Incredible Hulk, and they all said the same thing. They all asked me the exact same thing. Uh, uh, Deanna asked the same thing. Destiny asked the same thing. Everybody asked the same thing. So let's just be clear. This week, we will be discussing the Hulk movie without the dogs. Oh, shit. You okay? Psych. Okay. Because everybody asked that. Oh, is that the one with the dogs? No, it's not the one with the dogs. I didn't ask It's the other one. Yes. You didn't? Well, somebody did. I didn't know. Okay. Hi, baby. So, so here's the story of the Incredible Hulk. It's in two parts. Okay. And then they combine to form Voltron. Yes. So... So anyway, in May of this year, in May of 2018, the Marvel Cinematic Universe will be a decade old. Really? Yeah. Holy Iron shit. Man, Iron Man 1 slash Iron Man Prime came out in 2008. And you might say, oh, well, that's not that long ago. But to be clear, I recently rewatched the first Iron Man, and Tony Stark does say, no, I don't want to see this picture on your MySpace page. Yes. Yes, he does. That is, that is some painful shit. Uh-huh. So 18... So 10 years ago, 18 movies so far, 19... Uh, with the soon-to-be-released film Avengers Kitchen Sink. Yes. That one I liked. Yeah. uh, Yeah, the next Avengers movie is so packed that it's going to have everything but the kitchen sink. But now I've heard that they are adding the kitchen sink to it. So it's just Avengers Kitchen Sink. It's just going to have everything. Yeah. And and nowadays, Marvel movies are surefire hits, but it wasn't always the case. So let's go back here. Marvel announced, hey, we're going to be making Marvel movies. We're a movie studio now. We're going to be making Marvel films. And and, and we already have the, 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 the first two films we're going to be making, Iron Man and Hulk. And at the time, people laughed off these films. It's important to note that people were laughing at Marvel. They were unproven. Oh, there goes my vibrator again. Yes, I... Your vibrator. Yeah, I get it. I'm really funny on Twitter. You don't have to keep reminding me. So, people were laughing off Marvel. They were unproven. In fact, the, the tabloids... The magazines, the trades, they were sounding death bells. They were saying, Iron Man? No one even knows who Iron Man is. Wow. Yes, Marvel taking Marvel taking a big risk here. In fact, people didn't believe in Marvel so much that Jeff Bridges, the goddamn co-star, yeah. called the first Iron Man film, quote, this is a $200 million student film. Oh, Jeff. Because I, I, I don't know. So... I, I would just expect the dude to be a little more just, you know, like. Cool about it. Yeah. Tolerant, you know? Yeah. But yeah, 
Um, people said, oh, this is no doubt going to be a huge failure. When they were trying to make the movie, over 30 screenwriters passed on writing Iron Man because... Pfft, I, I spelled that as P-F-F-T. Hey, yes. do you want to write this this Marvel uh, movie for us? And all the screenwriters said, Pfft, I don't think so. A comic book movie? Nobody likes those. Yeah, yeah P-F-F-T. So, Pfft, I guess that's, that's the better way to pronounce it. In fact, a lot of the first Iron Man film was improvised because the script wasn't finished. Yeah. Yeah, so they felt like, oh, well, it, 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 we're going to put this to our advantage because that would work because Tony Stark is such a jet-setting billionaire that we can make this work. But no, it was just that the script wasn't finished. So, um, But really, Robert Downey made that movie. Yeah, but also people people didn't people people also didn't believe in Robert Downey Jr. at the time. The, well, the yeah, no, yeah, it was... thing he did. Hmm? Yeah, the last big thing he did was Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which was a great episode of the Pobon film that you should all listen to. Kiss, kiss, yes, bang, bang. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. that's not a song, Maxwell, but I like your moxie. Uh, hopes weren't high, but oh my god, this film cost $140 million to make, and it made almost $600 million. It was a huge hit. Lines around the block, like that last Francis the Mule picture. Yeah. I People fell that. in love with Iron Man, with Marvel Comics again, with Robert Downey Jr., with a pre-gooped uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yes. People loved I this movie and couldn't <laughs> wait for couldn't I, wait for more. Inter, interesting side okay. note. Wait, I remember Robert Downey. I remember da Robert Downey at the time when he was asked why he was going to be an Iron Man. He had said, "Because I want to be in a movie that people actually see." Yeah, yeah. That's a good answer. Um, <laughs> interesting. Side note here. Um, in the year 2000, the rights to Iron Man uh, were uh, controlled by New Line Cinemas, who worked hard on trying to make a, a New Line Cinemas Iron Man movie. Oh, yeah. We, uh... I think we dodged, we dodged the bullet we, we on that one. We dodged the bullet on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Here, go sit over there, Maxwell. We dodged a bullet on that one, but if you really pay, if you really close your eyes and and, and listen to your your inner voice, you can picture that entire film. Well, I saw the Fantastic Four movie, so yeah. Yeah. Bad green screen, a suit made out of plastic. Yeah. Nicholas Cage is yeah. Iron Man. <laughs> you know who? You know who would have played Happy Hogan? Adam Sandler, because he Adam's. was big with Newman at the time. <laughs> so he would have been the oh, Mister Stark. I will be driving you to the meeting. Zippity doo. That's my that's my Adam Sandler. That's actually, really it, good. It's Adam Sandler in 2000, not Adam Sandler now. Adam Sandler really now is, yeah, I hate my film. life. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> and I wish I could die. But that's year 2000, Adam Sandler. Wait, Thank dude, you. Time. Oh, I'm going to be going to the store. I so uh, yeah. You could be Adam Sandler. Young Adam Sandler, not now Adam you Sandler. still be Adam Sandler. So that's backstory I, I, number one. I hate that's his. I hate one. his life. So we're going to put backstory number one on pause and go to backstory number two. In the year 1990, NBC finally let Bill Bixby go. Yeah. the The TV show The Incredible Hulk was such a huge fucking hit for NBC in the 70s that they kept the rights to the Hulk by making one Hulk movie a year. Yeah. 
and they just kept doing those these these crappy cheap Hulk movies, and they kept they they kept making these crappy movies and releasing them once a year just so they could keep those ratings, and they they made the final Hulk made for TV movie in the year nineteen ninety. Which one was that? And, uh, the death of the Incredible Hulk. That's the one where they finally killed Bill Bixby. Oh, okay. And finally, let Lou Ferrigno retire in peace. And by in peace, I mean five dollars for an autograph at a convention. Yes. So the rights to the Hulk were finally up for grabs, and at the time when it came to Marvel Comics and rights, the man to talk to was. Avi Arad. Avi Arad. And I and I and is yeah. He was an an Israeli businessman who basically through some of the 80s and most of the 90s and a bit of the 2000s was Marvel's pimp. And not a very good pimp. Not a very good pimp because he was just going around just, "Hey, how are you doing, American Corporation? Yeah. I am Avi Arad. Would you like to buy the rights to Wolverine, my friend?" <laughs> sure, you would like to. Give me some American monies and you can have Wolverine. <laughs> So he's so he's selling characters left and right. Gee, I'm sure that won't end up biting Marvel in the yeah, fucking ass. Yeah. No, I'm not giving you more ketchup. You have a lot of ketchup. That's enough ketchup. Eat the ketchup on your plate. Oh, you want more? Okay, here you go. There you go. That's more. Oh, damn it. You knew I was faking. Okay, fine. There. No more ketchup for you. Yeah, no more ketchup for you. So Avi Arad is just is selling Marvel rights left and right. So he gets Hulk, and he sh he's shopping the rights to Hulk. And Hulk lands two years later at Universal. Okay. So they immediately start work in 1992, start pre-production on a Hulk movie. This is going to be huge for us. Hulk, we've got the Hulk now. We're going to make a film. So in 1995, they so they start writing scripts. They don't like this one. They start writing scripts. We don't like that one. Finally, in 1995, they write a script that ended up basically being the basis for the Hulk film. But just to be clear, Universal got the rights in 92. In 93, they started writing screenplays. And in 1995, they wrote the screenplay that would end up being the basis for the Hulk movie. In 2003, just to be clear, Universal spent about a decade making this film. Oh. You wouldn't know it by watching the film that they spent, no, over a decade. They spent over a decade working on, on Hulk dogs. <laughs> it's amazing. So they in 1995, they write the script. Uh, originally, a guy named Jonathan Hensley was set to direct it. And they started filming in 1998. But Hensley, who had never made a film before, he was ridiculously over budget, ridiculously over, uh, over, uh, ridiculously over schedule. And that's when they put the film on hold and fired Hensley. And it's like 1999. And we're like, damn it, we're, we're still working on the Hulk film. Don't worry, we're working on the Hulk film. It's just Harder now because we've already spent $150 million on a movie. We're throwing away now. The, I mean, they were working on this movie and they made a huge chunk of it and then they threw it away. So there's like an unfinished Hulk movie out there that Universal's, I guess, sitting on. Okay. So so they they rewrite the script and then they re rewrite the script and that is when acclaimed director Ang Lee signed on and immediately re re rewrote the script making it much more of a Greek family drama. Uh, 
so so they started filming that in 2001 and i'm skipping so much just random crazy shit eventually jonathan hensley is going through his original script and the script for ang lee's hulk and trying to figure out the exact similarities to see if he can like sue and claim that he wrote the script but it's difficult when you re 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 rewrite a script you know so Yada yada yeah, they, yada, and, and they and they literally break down those scripts like line by line and go like, okay, you have written one tenth, you know, yeah, you have written about yeah, thirty yeah. percent. So to actually get the writing credit, it they have to be able to show that you have written at least seventy percent of the script. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's ridiculous. So, so anyway, yada yada yada. Universal fucked up. They released this film simply titled Hulk in two thousand and three, and it's a big failure. Hulk dogs. Nick Nolte is drunker than usual. A ridiculously CGI'd Hulk, and and and, um, and a really bad villain. Uh, comic book panels in the movie. It did good in box office terms, but it was just a laughing stock. So Universal afterwards just immediately started tapping out yeah, and gave the rights back to Marvel. And that's when we combined these two uh, backstories, part one and part two. And that's how we get this week's film, 2008's uh, Hulk uh, smash movie, The Incredible Hulk. Uh, The interesting thing about The Incredible Hulk is that they hire this director and they said, uh, okay, well, I'm not sure if you've seen the last Hulk movie, but I think that's what happens when you hire someone who knows nothing about the comic book movie that they're trying to direct. Yeah. Cough, everything, every Batman after Tim Burton, cough, cough. Mm-hmm. So, so we want someone who knows The Incredible Hulk. Now, you want to direct our film. Do you know The Incredible Hulk? And the director said, yeah. I'm a big fan of Bill Bixby. And they said, you know what? Close enough. <laughs> and it's weird because this film is not an origin. And that's so weird because this is phase one of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. And it's shoved in the middle of a bunch of fucking origin stories. The origin of Iron Man. The origin of Thor. The origin of Captain America. And we're going to assume you already know the Hulk. I... W- and frankly, I appreciated that. I did not want to see a Hulk origin story. Let's just get the fuck on with it. And they just got the fuck on with it in the opening title credits. And I'm, I, 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 that I'm good with. Yeah, like I appreciate what they're going for. The thing that bugs me a little bit is that Finally, we got the rights free from Universal and from NBC. Finally, we can make our own Hulk and not be beholden on on Ang Lee or on uh, the 70s and Lou Ferrigno. Finally, we can make our own Hulk movie. Yeah. You know what? Let's make it a sequel to Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> That's what this feels like, that that Marvel finally got the chance to make a Hulk movie, and they just made a sequel to the TV show The Incredible Hulk. And there, there's so much of it. There's the sad walking away music from the TV show. Yeah. Uh, they they got a – what's his name? Um, um, uh, Edward Norton. It, and specifically, the director said that he hired Edward Norton because he looked so much like Bill Bixby. If if Bill uh, Bixby had not yet reached puberty, yes. Yeah. And then fucking Lou Ferrigno's in it. <laughs> yes. Although although I did appreciate the nod to Bill Bixby that they actually had. Which was the clip oh, that of they, the courtship. That the courtship of Eddie's father is Yeah. I was like, oh, that's, yeah. uh, I appreciate that. 
Yes. So, so throughout this film, they are really telegraphing the fact that uh, our basis for this is the TV show, The Incredible Hulk. And that's like I hadn't seen this much telegraphing of their source material since the third Batman film when Robin says, holy rusted metal, Batman. <laughs> It's like, oh, shit, we were basing this on a dark, twisted versions of Batman. But damn, we're going back to we're going back to Adam West, aren't we? Ah, yeah. oh, shit. Now we're in the Adam West portion of the DC universe. Hooray. <laughs> so here are some stats on The Incredible Hulk. 2008 film, it's the second film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and honestly the one that could have ended the Marvel Cinematic Universe before it really got going. What happened was, this is the Hulk story. Well, this is the Bruce Banner story. Yes. So, Marvel was working on the film, and then they hired Edward Norton to star. Edward Norton was hired, and who? Boy, apparently he's a big fucking asshole to work with. I he and, and 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 I, and I don't understand that. I have heard I have heard about so many actors who are just shit to work with, just just shit. And I don't. I, I Tommy Lee Jones, uh, Val Kilmer, yeah. which which you know and it shows val kilmer was one of those guys who really could have had a brilliant career but he's a dick you know yeah and and i don't get it i really don't get it you know don't you realize that you're only an actor okay yeah that's, you're that's not the edward curing norton cancer right there yeah yeah, as Edward Norton came in, he demanded all these things. He rewrote the script on his own. He actually he he tried to change so much about this film that he actually got it in his head that he was basically another director. You know, like yeah. let's change this, let's change that. Give me the script. I'm going to rewrite this entire thing. That's... We need to take this scene, add this scene in. It's like, dude, you're hired to play a part. You're not being hired to make this film. Yeah, that's a, that's some Bruce Willis shit right there. Yeah, yeah, that's like how there's a writer in every Will Smith uh, contract that if Will Smith is hired to be in a film. Will Smith has the rights to rewrite the entire movie to fit Will Smith. Because Will Smith can't act. Yeah. He can yeah. only be Will Smith. Yeah. So, so yeah, Edward Norton thought that he did the sun shone out of his ass. Uh, so Marvel had no choice but to fire him. And if you would like to learn more about Edward Norton being a jackass, then please watch the Oscar award-winning film Birdman. I am really going to have to watch that. It's an amazing film. It, it's edited in a way where it, it, it literally looks yeah, like just one sh continuous shot. Yeah. The entire film it keeps uh, progressing time-wise, but it's one big, long, uninterrupted shot. Really? Yeah. It's it's not technically one actual long interrupted shot. They used a lot of uh, CGI to make it seem like it was one shot. But yeah, the entire film looks as if you know, you're watching this scene that's happening in this room, and then the camera moves from that room to the next room, and now three months has passed. Yeah. Oh, maybe we should think about hiring this guy. And then you go from that room down a hallway into the stage, and now that man has been hired, and now they're working on the play. So it, it really is like a mind fuck. Yeah. But all the people that are in the film are ba are are acting loose versions of themselves so Ed, 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 edward norton plays a young cocky asshole who's trying to redo the entire play and is a, impossible to work with so if you want to know what the incredible hulk was like and why marvel fired edward norton just watch birdman it's a really good film um 
So they fired Edward Norton, and then who did they hire to be the Incredible Hulk? Everybody knows who they got to play the Incredible Hulk. In yeah. fact, Destiny has a crush on him. I am talking, of course, about 83-year-old actor Dick Van Dyke. What? I mean, yeah, him too. But... Who was hired to the, play yeah. the, the Incredible Con- Hulk. The Cockney accent did not work for Bruce Banner. Yeah, you know? yeah, the cocky chimney sweep accent from from uh, Mary Poppins just yeah. didn't work for Bruce Banner. So, plus, he was just ridiculously old. He was 83 years old at the time. So that's when they fired him and they hired Mark Barkalo. Yeah. Who played him in the Avengers. And I remember going to the Avengers, going into the Avengers thinking, who the fuck is this Mark Growlalo guy? Yeah. I don't know who he is. I mean, I'm sorry, Edward Norton is the Hulk. I don't think I'll ever accept someone else as the Hulk. Well, thankfully, I was fucking wrong. Mm-hmm. Because he, he Mark did a, he, he did a great job, and and I'm I'm really really impressed with his acting chops. I I, I would be curious to see a, a feature length Hulk movie with him. But I just don't think the Hulk. I mean, I, I love the Hulk, but I don't, I don't think he can carry a movie. I mean, because there's really nothing much to the Hulk. Hulk smash, you know. Yeah, I would be perfectly happy if all Mark Ruffalo does from here on out is uh, uh, incredible Hulk buddy road comedies. Yes. Yes. Like, that would be like awesome. I, I I wasn't 100% on board with the idea of we're going to get the Hulk and we're going to get the Thor and we're going to make a comedy. I'm like, okay, I'm not sure about that, but God damn it. I don't want another serious Hulk movie. Just, just bring it on. Yeah. Bring on the comedy. And if possible, why don't you get the soggy bottom guy who was who started becoming the leader in this movie? Because I would like to see him again because he's fucking amazing. The 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 what? The the guy who who Mama. ended up being the leader, a uh, Mister Blue. He was also uh, oh, okay. one of the soggy bottom boys from Oh Brother Where Art Thou. Oh okay, right. So he's just the soggy bottom boy to me. Mama. I'm not giving you more ketchup. That is enough ketchup for you. No, my nose. That's enough ketchup. You eat that ketchup, okay? You know, for some people, they eat the chicken nugget, but you just eat the chicken nugget as a way to get to the ketchup, and that's bizarre. No, I. you have two plates. You're, you can be fine with that. Leave both plates there, okay? Jesus, you are a handful. Leave the other plate. I know there are two plates there, but just leave it. No, you're not playing with the Hulk hand. So, um, where was I? In fact, I'm quite surprised that after so many years, the Marvel Cinematic Universe finally recognized this movie by bringing uh, Thunderbolt Ross back into the fold. Yes. Really surprised by that when Captain America Civil War came out and and everybody went, oh, my God. So the Incredible Hulk movie did happen. I thought you guys were just pretending that never existed. Yeah, but, you know, Bill Hurd has always been a a solid actor. So, like, he doesn't deserve to be punished because Edward Norton's a douchebag. Yeah. You know? So I was yeah. I, I was good with that. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, I, I was surprised by how much I thought the movie didn't suck. Like, I thought I was really going to hate this movie more. Like, I had seen it before, but I thought that, you know, we've seen so many Marvel Cinematic Universe films. And we're ready to, you know, we're really close to see the end of this current cinematic universe that I thought, oh, going back to the second Marvel movie, I am going to absolutely hate this. But no, it's all right. It's, yeah, it's all right. It's a little on the bland side, though. 
Yeah, because it's based on the TV show, is why. Yeah. I, 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 and That's like, why the Bland Side is based on a TV show. And for as much as a prima donna Edward Norton may be, he didn't really seem to have his heart in it. Yeah, no, he did all right. He did yeah, all right, but he was awesome in Fight Club. You know? Oh yeah, no. He, he, he's he's, he's been awesome in a lot of roles. So, but the so for him to just be all right, it's it's you're phoning it in. You know? Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, no. He could have he could have been a lot better. Yeah, he had like what three facial expressions? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. But when, when the thing that I forgot is that a Bruce Banner is going to America to finally meet Mr. Blue in person. Yeah. And what I was hoping for is when they finally get to Mr. Blue, AKA Edward Bunker, who eventually ends up dying during the diamond heist that happens off screen. Yeah. I, I was hoping that you would finally see him, you know, at the diner going, I like some of her early stuff. Lucky Star, Borderline, <laughs> Papa Don't Preach Face. I tuned out. Yeah. That's what I was hoping for, but I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, again, I know we've talked about this, but but um, a really weird seeing Liv Tyler. Yeah in this movie because she has not done a lot but then again if you are the daughter of Aerosmith then you're probably already not like dying for cash you know yeah she probably doesn't have to work do you think she has a weird face there's something weird about her and I'm not sure what I think it's be I think it's the fact that she's always looked 24 it's it's almost like if you look at her from one angle, it's like, yeah, you're really kind of attractive. And then you look at her from another angle, and it's like, does she have Down syndrome? <laughs> She's got a face. She's definitely got a face. You know? Yeah. You, you, you know what? Whenever I see Liv Tyler, I always think... Oh, somebody tried to photocopy Jennifer Connelly and it came out wrong. I I like that. Yeah, yes, that's, that's, I, I, I that's can, how I always see Liv Tyler. I, I can wrap around that analogy, yes. Liv that Tyler, and pineapples. Liv Tyler is like when you try and photocopy something that's already been photocopied. Yeah. Like a clone of a clone. Yes, yes, I, 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 I am feeling that. Yeah. And then at the end of this film, uh, uh, Bruce Banner, a.k.a. Bill Bixby, is in a cabin in the woods in Canada. And that really struck me because I'm like, you know what? Uh, Bruce Banner is in hiding, in hiding from the police, from the government. So it... In my mind, he's definitely renting that cabin with Dexter. Because <laughs> they're both in the same boat. They both end up in the woods in Canada. I smell a sitcom. Wait, 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 wait. Dexter from the Simpsons? Yeah, yeah. Dexter wow. and the Hulk. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but Edward Norton, Bruce Banner, he's like really neat. Yeah. And Dexter, he he's just a slob. Yeah. 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 And then Dexter tries so hard to lure this guy into the cabin and to try and win this guy's loyalty and trust and finally gets him to the cabin and he's about to kill him. But then uh, Bruce Banner just hulks out and kills him and that drives Dexter into a rage. <laughs> Hulk, but he was my victim. <laughs> that was my Dexter impersonation. You can't be too excited. 
<laughs> but you also can't you can't show too much emotion. Yeah. Yeah. That's apparently I have a Dexter impersonation. And, and, and just just them meeting like for the first time when they're moving into the cabin and they're gonna become roommates and Dexter would be like, Well, if we're living together, you should know I'm a serial killer. To which Bruce then, Banner goes, Yes, yeah, so what? <laughs> yeah. Dexter goes, You should know I'm a serial killer, and then Bruce Banner goes, Well, technically Yeah. I kind of am too. Hold I my mean, beer. I'm a killer, but without the serial part. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas you are meticulously killing all these people, mine's more of like a rage killing. Yeah. <laughs> and Dexter's just staring at him. I think this could work perfectly. <laughs> when can you move in? Well, I'm doing nothing, so now. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I, I, I liked it. I, yeah, no, I had fun. This was fun. And then it Edward was... Norton starts going, hmm. that, that was another, Dexter, that was another Dexter, odd oh, couple throwback. Yeah. It, no, no, uh, Bruce Banner's making that noise, and Dexter goes, what on earth is that noise? And he goes, oh, I swallowed a hard I swallowed a hard drive. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is my thing now. I swallow computer equipment. Mm -hmm. That was a really difficult scene. Like uh there were a lot of things in this film that I thought was a bit uh creepy. There was a lot of Cronenberging happening here. Yeah. In this film. But the part that I had the hardest trouble with is, oh, God, you're going to swallow that flash drive? <laughs> God damn. I got a flash drive in front of me. I'm not swallowing this thing. Hurts like hell. I have a, I have trouble swallowing big pills. I'm not going to swallow this <laughs> fucking flash drive. That in and of itself will make me turn into the Hulk. Yes. For shit's sake. And then, like, he comes out of the bathroom and he's holding the flash drive. It's like, God damn, you're in some random supernaturally in hotel. There's no way your hands are clean right now, sir. <laughs> no. And it's weird because, like, I, I haven't seen this film a lot and I'm not a big fan of this film. But I would have a decent amount of money if I had a quarter for every time I said, Tienes más stretchy. <laughs> for whatever reason that was the one line i took away from this film and i've been quoting it non-stop probably since 2008 <laughs> like like i'll be in the i'll be in the bedroom and and natasha's like come on steve put some clothes on and let's go and it's like it, hold on i'm looking for the right pants these ones are too tight these ones don't fit i just need some you know tennis moss stretchy yeah For whatever reason, that was that was my that was my that was my go to from this film. I watched it with the kids. I watched it with Maxwell, and I tried explaining to him. I'm like, "Hey, you know the Hulk. You've seen you've seen all of these films, uh, Avengers, over and over again, and then Avengers two because you were obsessed with Ultron, and we've watched Thor Ragnarok like two or three times. Yeah, FYI, this is not that Hulk. It is that Hulk, but it's a different Hulk, and so he stayed with the film for about the first half hour, and then he was gone in his room. Bella watched the entire thing. Yeah. And she said it was okay. I, I wouldn't expect Maxwell to be able to wrap around that movie. Yeah. Like, I tried to show... I, I've tried two or three times to show Man of Steel to Maxwell, and he's just not fucking having it. <laughs> you know? So I also didn't expect him to like The Incredible Hulk because, again, it's not that exciting of a fucking superhero movie. Yeah. Bella, your thoughts on The Incredible Hulk? It's good, but it's not great. It's bad, but it's not the worst. The, 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 the only thing that I really, really liked about this film was I forgot how much I liked um, Honey Bunny in this movie. Yeah. Honey Bunny? I love you, Pumpkin. I love you, honey. Oh, buddy. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicole, this is a robbery. <laughs> oh, 
I mean, his 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 accent changes like like uh, wow, your accent's really changing there, Emil Blonsky. Who do you think you are, Doctor Stephen Strange? <laughs> but but oh my god, I just love him and everything. He is just an amazing man. He's yeah. Sweet. Natasha was obsessed with this crime, this this. This oh, cop procedural show oh, that starred him for two seasons. No, it was called Lie to Me. Oh, and he was a detective, but his thing was he he studied, you know, body language and, oh, and the face. True. Yeah, she I was obsessed that. with it for She's a while. Yeah, that. he could tell when someone was lying because he studied their face, their walk, the way they stood. Lie to Me. It was on Netflix. Facial, Facial expressions. And yeah. Yeah, that show was fucking amazing. Like, I I didn't know who any of these people were, but God, he just carried that show. He's fucking amazing. Ooh. I didn't realize that was him. Yeah, that was him. That was the guy from Lie to Me. That's great. Yeah. He was fucking great in that film. Eventually, he turns into the Abomination, or as I like to call him, the Trumpination. Yes. So now uh, Honey Bunny is the Trumpination, and the only way to stop Honey Bunny is, of course... We need to get Samuel Jackson and his bad motherfucker wallet out. <laughs> Samuel Jackson needs to start shouting, spouting Bible verses at a Denny's. <laughs> the only way to stop him. I really. So, so that's what I've got for the Incredible Hulk. It's an amazing. It, 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 it's surprising that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is known for so many big massive epic hits and yet there's one movie that they did that they're kind of ashamed of and are sweeping under the rug and somehow that's not ant-man or dr strange (laughs) yes i mean i loved both of those movies but i thought for sure finally marvel's gonna fail right but no it was the hulk how did you get the hulk wrong (laughs) you know Mm mm-hmm so that is all I have for this week's movie. Next week, Bunny. Yes. Prepare yourself. Okay. Because it is... Decision time! Decision time, okay. I have two movies lined up for next week. You... Do you like my costume? Yes, I, I do. I it myself. So that's your costume for yeah, the tomorrow. for the... Medieval fair? Yeah. I'm working on the Dark Ages fair, and it's going to be great. You come in, and it's just a, a field with a bunch of dead bodies. Oh. And uh, first off, you get a disease. And secondly, we get rich people to shit on you. Oh, sounds like that. And then the rest of it, you're just getting tortured. I'm really excited for my Dark Ages Wait, fair. It's going to be torture? sweet. Huh? What kind of torture? Uh, you, you get tied to a rack, and you're forced to watch... The Netflix movie Sandy Wexler starring Adam Sandler on a loop. Nonstop. I thought it was like sexual torture. No, not sexual torture. It's even worse torture. It's Adam Sandler's movie Sandy Wexler, and you just have to watch or it. Or it could be and Jack again. and Jill. That one's pretty bad. Yeah, that one's pretty bad too, but that one has Dario Cueto in it. So you, you, uh, I haven't seen the film, but already it's better than Sandy Wexler. You get, you get to watch. Dario Cueto's in that one. Bunny, I have two films picked out. You will be choosing which film we watch next week. May I please ask those... We just disconnected. Hello? Yo! Okay. The call dropped, and I'm not sure why. No, neither am I. Okay, so we're still recording. Yes, we are. Okay, we have. I have two movies picked out Me. for next week, and you, Bunny, will be choosing which movie we watch for the podcast. May I ask those in attendance here at home not to say anything or play favorites when it comes to these two films? I will be doing the same as well. Here are the two choices for next week, Bunny, in no particular order. Number one, the original film version of Jesus Christ Superstar. Even your gasps 
if you could keep your gasps to yourself, people. The original uh, uh, movie version of Jesus Christ Superstar, the musical. Or... <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm getting a phone call. This is weird. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Deanna. What? What's up? Oh, yeah, sure, that's fine. Everybody else is here. Yeah, everybody else is here, so that's fine. Okay. You're leaving Seminole now. Okay, so, okay, you're going to be here eventually. Okay. All right, love you, bye. That was a bill collector. Named Deanna. That was a bill collector. I fell in love with him pretty quickly. <laughs> That's just me. I love too much. It, choice number one, the original movie version, motion picture version from the 70s of Jesus Christ Superstar, or new on Netflix, the feature, the, the, the live action film, Speed Racer. <gasps> Speed Racer? Speed Racer. That bizarre live action film made by the Wachowski two individuals? Yes. Funny. Yes. So, they're, I, the I, I, they're, they're the Wachowski sisters now. I think they were still the Wachowski brothers when they made the film. But they were. yes, the Wachowski sisters. It, I, I, I gotta go with Speed Racer. I'm I'm really tempted for the Jesus Christ Superstar, but I gotta go. I gotta yours. go Speed Racer. I gotta go. Speed the decision Racer. is yours. Is <clears throat> because because I feel Speed Racer is one of those. Did I lose you again? Okay. <laughs> okay. Funny? Yeah. So I I, I got to go sp okay. I got to go Speed Racer and in particular okay. cuz I feel that Speed Racer is really really one of those misunderstood films. Cool. I have never seen it before. I have never seen it before. So 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 next week we're doing Speed Racer on Netflix and then the week after that we have to do Jesus Christ Jesus Superstar. Christ Superstar. We should have we should have done that for Easter. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we absolutely should have. But but uh, Easter is why I want to do it soonish. So next week we are doing Speed Racer, and then after that, join us for Jesus Christ Superstar. So that is next week on the podcast. Uh, but now that we're at the end of this podcast, and I'm looking back at everything we've done. I got to say, uh, I think this has been a pretty good episode. This has been a good episode. I didn't get a damn. Bunny hates this episode. <laughs> and he hates this episode and he's dead to me. And he hates us. So. He hates us. He hates freedom. He hates America. He hates the gays. He <laughs> hates the gays. And it's all of... I did meditate. Earlier. And so, all yeah. the little birdies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I'll say it. I think this has been a damn good episode. <laughs> yeah. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve. And on behalf of uh, Bella and Maxwell and Eleanor and Deanna and Destiny and Matt and everybody here. I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do schwaffles and poopy tits. Do 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 do